Hi, uh, so I'll do a piece today about um, trade-offs, weaknesses, and kind of like the general groupings of machines and where they fall. Um, so this kind of, whoops, left the floor lock on. Um, this is kind of inspired by the uh, uh, PVP I did yesterday, and I saw a really great tank. And it was a tank that I'd already seen that was already pretty solid, um, that had been improved even further. But it still suffered from the major weaknesses. Um, and my server says max recommended for a reason, but uh, this is kind of the how and why. Um, tanks are pretty widespread. They're probably one of the most common types. Um, a lot of diversity, a lot of fun things you can do with them. You know, I've, I've made my fair share of tanks myself. Um, they're just not my go-to is all. Uh, so let's talk about matchups and how these occur and why. Now, um, for whatever reason, it appears this tank I have is surprisingly compact. I don't realize it made it so compact. But uh, this tank, if you notice, has a very interesting muzzle, and then it has a fairly long barrel with the turret being based fairly backward. But when it's facing forward, um, it actually has very little muzzle exposed. And then it has smaller, shorter guns below it um, to help cover up any potential weaknesses. Aiming backwards, this blind spot is just a little bit bigger, but not really by any considerable degree. Uh, now, by comparison, let's uh, see if we can find ourselves a less uh, satisfactory tank I've made before. Let's see, uh... No, actually, I guess small guns have always been my thing. I'll be damned. Anyways, um, so this is a good tank design, uh, again, for the same reason. This is a much larger sized body, uh, especially in length. Uh, and it's a bit taller as well, but the main thing is that the gun isn't that much longer than the body. When the gun does become longer than the body for a tank, Swords become your single greatest weakness, which is, um, to, uh, point something out here briefly. Do, do, do. There we go. Uh, why there's a giant pair of tank hunter bayonets mounted on my Cobra tank? Um, it recognizes this weakness and exploits it, essentially being a, uh, pretty weird tank in that sense. But, um, the biggest problem with any tank is that, especially with having a unified turret, you have one body exposed with very, one very long gun. Then when he gets inside that and, uh, you know, pierces a hole in it or whatever and hits it with a sword and doesn't absolutely kick you over like a small child, um, then, yeah, he runs into some real problems. And the uh, damage that can be inflicted is absolutely alarming relative to the time that has passed. So, uh, in this regard, I would recommend that tank keep his muzzle short and have something, whether it just be bayonets inside the barrels or what, to parry incoming um, attacks. But this weakness is not unique to tanks, and in fact, there are just two ways to do basically any type of vehicle. Infighting and outfighting, I would dub it. Outfighting um, is okay with long range combat and uses a long distance to use superior gunnery or superior maneuverability to take the advantage. An infighter um, will likely have very short guns um, as a theme, but not a necessity. Some sort of melee weapon on backup. Um, and generally pretty good maneuvers, or at least some pretty ballsy piloting, if not that. Um, and what it comes down to is they'll probably keep you at about medium or medium close range until they close in at close range suddenly and try to hack, hack your limbs off violently. Or pin you against the wall and start shoving a gun to your face and pulling the trigger repeatedly. Uh, this is not an, an uncommon occurrence in the uh, world of mechs. And I think, uh, you can probably guess by now, I am generally an infighter. For me, it started with uh, the first real combat-ready mech I made, um, the uh, Overkill Model C, which had uh, a pair of brass knuckles based on swords and a sword-based shield that has since become outphased by uh, uh, rebalancing. By the time, it was sword and gun, and it wasn't afraid to use a shield to get close quarters and then exploit its melee capabilities to punch you and shoot the crap out of you at the same time. It was infighter by design and pretty uh, ballsy at that. So suffice to say, um, that mech had reason to be an infighter. Uh, most of my other mechs don't. I'm just a crazy bastard. So uh, moving on to another example here. Let's see if I have any of these. Um, I gotta take one of the centaur, huh? Do, 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 do. Yes, I have a lot of machines. Don't pay that any mind. All right. So. Um, yeah, this is the Centaur. It is an incredibly crappy walker with a giant backpack full of guns and apparently a toggleable aiming system. Oh, is it only aim when optics are on? No? 
Let's see. Uh, oh, fire lock. Is that it? Nope. Mm -mm. Four? No, it's targeting. Oh, this is reading the wrong usage panel. I will literally never guess this. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's one. Okay, there we go. So this thing has guns. It has absolutely abysmal view. But you know, it has guns and it has a couple of things, like probably like some swords somewhere. Yeah, a little sword sweeper. Uh, a butt cannon because rear attacks. And generally, it's a giant piece of crap. Um, but yeah, the Centaur is a pure walker. And it, it's pretty alright as far as they go. It is absolutely combat and practical. So this is probably a bad example, but you know, it runs at pretty decent speeds and it is 100% pure walker as witnessed by its whole spinning gyroscopes. And holy shit, is there a lot of gyroscopes. So yeah, what it comes down to anyways, um, in the case of um, pure walkers versus accelerated walkers, is that pure walkers generally have very slow turning or very limited aim capabilities. One of the two. Um, they aren't as free of a design for obvious reasons, um, being they're limited for the recharge bonus as many of their competitors. So it's very hard to find a ground only like pure walker mech that you cannot absolutely just run circles around. Uh, quite frankly, it's this crazy, crazy common build to find uh, ways to exploit um, holes in their defense or whatever. So a simple bit of circling will generally wield the weakness for um, true walkers. It's not hard to do and it's pretty effective. You, know, you can shoot the living crap out of them while you do it. And it's basically an effortless process, as you can see. Um, at least you get good maneuvering. If you, <coughs> if you don't, um, then yeah, that would be kind of 50-50. In this regard, I would say true walkers and tanks are probably a good fight for each other. And that true walkers will have limited mobility, tanks will have better mobility, and both will very likely have some sort of obvious limit. Uh, but now what becomes funny is the next thing. Um, and this is kind of a less clear line than the previous two is uh, harassers against um, harassers against uh, ground max or even accelerated walkers, particularly accelerated walkers, I would say. So we have pretty free aim. This is less of a problem if your aim is slow and takes a couple seconds to wrap back around. You can end up with a couple problems going on, as you can see here. Um, so all you really need to know about um, this sort of matchup I'm talking about is that it's very easy to be able to have good aiming systems or limited aim ranges that aim fairly well in most conditions. But having a very fast enemy um, circle you, fly over you, uh, fly vertically all of a sudden, do any sort of weird sharp maneuvering and generally use small size can wield uh, pretty catastrophic results in the amount of hit ratios you two land on each other. So people often say that small machines are the meta and this is generally untrue. Um, they are effective more often than larger machines for a couple of reasons. Um, their size makes them hard to hit. They're small and annoying and move very fast. Obviously, they have uh, maneuverability and firepower to at least an acceptable degree. Chances are on their side. But the thing is, um, and this is true, is that you need to add more trackers to be able to quickly and really aim in any one direction, one situation, so you cannot be out-circled like that. You also need a no-drop camera, chances are, um, and very uh, good look direction, aim directions, uh, aim ranges, things like that. So, you know, this is literally 360 ramp around with plus 90, minus 90 on the hammerhead. You can't outrun the hammerhead. Um, or if you can, you can't do it for more than half a second until he gets wise and puts a couple MG rounds back in your face. Trust me, I did quite a bit of bat battle against, uh, against harassers yesterday, and it, it was a good fight, truth be told. But uh, the hammerhead wasn't as that sharp a disadvantage as this guy would be. So, um, that's important. Uh, I think they data was uses 285 trackers. This guy uses, I think, like 490 trackers or something like that. So the hammerhead's way overclocked. And this will increase your energy cost. But in my opinion, having straight aiming and uh, very fast, snappy response is very key to any mech. Um, if you want to be able to do things how you want, when you want, against virtually any opponent. Otherwise, small bots will exploit you. Small bots are only devastating if you are not prepared for fine aim. Um, which I know is kind of a hard concept for a lot of beginners to get down. But like I said, more trackers, um, work on cameras so you can get a dropless camera. If not, I think I have a couple configurations covered in some of my videos. 
uh, somewhere in there in Giant Tutorials, but yeah. Um, and the last match I want to talk about is actually the air mech versus the ground mech. This is not dissimilar from harassers, as harassers tend to be uh, air mechs. And this isn't really an explicitly clear line, once again, but um, there is kind of an advantage that, depending on the design of the ground mech, um, that uh, har uh, many harasser types may be able to uh, get the advantage. Um, or, sorry, sorry, air mech types may be able to get the advantage using verticality or using very. Uh, similar aspects, or simply just being small and fast, um, or even just fast and particularly harassing. Um, one of the problems you run into is that air mechs can run away several times faster. So even if you can aim at them and you can kick the losing crap out of them, there is a slight edge in that they might be able to run away in time. Um, this edge has been overstated from what I have seen, but even if the enemy runs away, you have essentially defeated them. And if you're sieging their objective and they run away from you, it, it's in the bag. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it, that you still get to do damage to their points, whether or not they die. Um, if they're just skipping everything you do and hitting your objective only, even after multiple of firing on them, bit shameful tactic, I'm not going to lie, like, why intentionally avoid combat with the enemy? Um, you can do it, of course, I mean, I'm not going to stop you, and I'm not probably going to complain, I mean, I think there's one guy I complained, because that's literally all he did, is he ignored the entire enemy team and ran circles around shooting the objective for the entire game. So we had to put someone on defense just to, you know, uh, stop him from doing that shit because apparently no one was watching defense. But the moment we did that, his, his game was over. Um, it's pretty weird, suffice to say. But uh, all, all you really need to know is that um, if you are a ground mech, you want to make sure you have dashing capabilities and fast, unpredictable maneuvers. Ultimately, the air mech's weakness is the fact that flying does not make you a harder target to hit, really. Sometimes there's verticality aim ranges in the picture, but... Um, with a lot of competent enemies, that won't really be the thing. Instead, I would argue um, the fact that uh, instead, fast, unpredictable movements are more important than slightly faster, more omnidirectional movements. You know, if you can dash side to side, forward, backward, backward up, forward, back down again, you, know, you can do lots of crazy maneuvers, and they'll have a hard time predicting it. So, the screen projectiles can't have a steady line about to run into where the hell you're going. So, um, so let's say dashing is handy for dodging fire, it's handy for catching up with air mechs, it's handy for a couple other things. Those are tools I'd recommend you equip to virtually um, any mech you want to really be combat savvy. It's been kind of like a, oh, and, oh right, I almost forgot, and one last setup, aircraft. Um, aircraft have a tendency to be small, fast, nimble, or possibly just really goddamn fast, and have usually pretty minimal firepower because they spend a lot of energy on uh, movement systems. Uh, there are, of course, exceptions, but generally, uh, aircraft will be looking to run in, harass you, get a couple hits, and fly back out of the area and be on their way. I don't think aircraft are particularly effective, so this is kind of why I forgot to mention this initially. Aircraft are generally less effective than going head-to-head -head with the enemy and killing them, because once the enemy focuses on firing on you, you're not usually so fast or maneuverable in most places that you can't be shot down or you won't be shot down eventually. And the damage ratio you'll get from high elevations or fast drive-bys with low accuracy is pretty abysmal, honestly. Um, so there will be a discrepancy in how much you are uh, actually doing damage relative to your survival time. And that's not really plan A in my book. Um, so all I'll say about aircraft is they're small, they're flimsy, they don't have firepower. They harass at best, and once enemy gets someone with competent aim shooting at you, and good gunnery skills, you might just buy it, be, might as well be dead in the next few seconds. If they aren't, well, maybe there's someone there with plasma launchers that can get a nice lock that'll chase you around in circles if you're running compact patterns for dodging. Um, and if you're not running compact patterns for dodging, you're running long lines for dodging, which is probably going to get you shot. Uh, my advice, don't be aircraft unless you're really just playing for the fun of it. If you're playing for the fun of it, knock yourself out, have a good time. I mean, at some point it's a game, you gotta have fun. So that's kind of a talk about um, common things to watch out for. If you play any of these types of mechs and you think you may have any of these weaknesses, it's a good time to uh, check out your systems, make sure you can patch against these consistent weaknesses. And most opponents probably won't know these weaknesses exist, so if you don't know how to do it, don't be absolutely scared. But I would consider this a great bonus assignment, purely on the grounds that your enemies will eventually exploit it if they are uh, sufficiently experienced or even just a little bit crafty. Um, they may find weaknesses in your mech in due time.
Uh, I know I've done that several times with enemies, uh, and uh, it's hard to say enemies have done that with me. Oh yeah, I guess they've done that with me. Uh, playing mode on Helios got shot down a lot for uh, flying a long straight line, so it's mostly just meant for getting around town quickly and doing drop attacks, so not a failure per se, but definitely, as I to say, uh, the gimmick only works so long until you really have to be prepared for everything. And that's why I'd recommend you look into these uh, bulletin points if you can. Anyways, uh, until next time, this is WCCC signing out.